Hello, and welcome to Five Ways to Reduce Freight Costs with Easier Data Analytics. This is a special webcast brought to you by our friends at Logistics Technologies. My name is Bob Troublecock. I'm a Special Projects Editor at Logistics Management, and I'll be your moderator for this event. Joining me today is Adriano Viterbo. He's Analytics and Audit Program Manager of Logistics Technologies. Now, before we get started, a few housekeeping items. If you haven't done so already, I'd like to remind you that attendees are invited to download today's presentation, as well as some additional material you might find interesting. Just click on the resource icon on your screen. Finally, remember that this is an interactive event. Feel free to submit questions as you listen to the webcast. If we don't get to all of your questions, we'll forward them to Adriano later. Now to today's webcast. For most shippers, the challenge to reduce freight spend isn't about setting up cost savings programs. It's about gaining visibility into shipping data to support their decisions. The task of gathering all carriers' delivery data and normalizing was often too time-consuming and lacked real-time visibility, well, until now. In today's webinar, Adriano will discuss the key ways in which transportation-focused data platforms and tools are helping shippers more quickly identify savings. So Adriano, without further ado, the microphone is yours. Thank you, Bob, and thank you to the listeners who've taken the time out of their busy day to join us on our webinar today. My goal is really to arm you with insight into reducing transportation costs through the use of data, so hopefully you can take away one or two key points to allow you to start doing this. For those of you that have read industry websites or magazines, you'll see a common thread, headlines screaming that transportation costs are rising. If you take a look at the chart to the right, you'll see that over the past few years, there has been a consistent increase in transportation costs. And since the Great Recession of 2008 and 2009, the trend is definitely upward. This year alone, costs are set to rise by 12%, driven by driver shortages, electronic log devices, increased demand, and the Amazon effect. For those of you that don't know, the Amazon effect is really just a push towards e-commerce and away from traditional retail. We'll touch more upon that in the next slide. Despite this upward trend in costs, shippers are still tasked with reducing them. You may ask yourself how this can be possible because they seem like conflicting goals, but data really gives you the information to be able to accomplish both of these things. Oftentimes, data gathering and transforming into information can be time consuming, lack real-time visibility, and can put a strain on your resources to not only build, but to maintain this infrastructure. However, transportation data analytics help you to achieve all of these things and start giving you information to help drive costs down. As I previously mentioned, the growth of e-commerce has really had a profound effect to drive transportation costs up. As the chart on the right shows, global e-commerce sales are set to hit nearly 5 billion in 2021 which is nearly double that of what they're expected to be this year. Managing and controlling costs for e-commerce is going to be crucial for shippers, especially if you have a product which goes viral through social media. And since many customers today expect free shipping, one again may seem at odds with giving customers free shipping while trying to drive transportation costs down. However, the number one shopping cart abandonment is expensive shipping. And on top of that, a study last year showed that 88% of customers are more likely to buy a product when free shipping is offered. And speaking to some of our customers, 46.5% say free shipping has actually increased profits. Overall, an analytics software is going to help you to monitor and manage shipping costs and profitability, spikes in accessorial charges, service utilization, and really hold carriers accountable. This is key information that is going to be relevant to you to be ready for an e-commerce boom while maintaining your transportation budget. Five ways that data is going to help you to ship better are going to be reviewed over the next few slides. An analytics platform is going to help you achieve driving costs down while really digging into some of the analytics behind your supply chain. The first way we can do this is through better decision making. And really, this is the cornerstone of all other aspects. As you see on the screen, the data to decision process has three clear objectives. Gather data, create information and knowledge, and then turn this into actionable decisions. In its purest form, data is just raw numbers. However, given tools such as a data analytics platform, you can start to analyze, monitor, and measure 
these numbers, which give you information and knowledge. And knowledge really drives the cause and effect relationships that you can see in your supply chain. This will give you actionable decisions, which you can start to put in place in your supply chain to really optimize strategies and start to put in place process improvements. One way where we've seen data analytics uncover process improvements is with a client that we have. They, they had a large spike in transportation costs. As we dug into the data, we saw this was isolated to one distribution center. Looking at their air to ground utilization, we noticed that they had a 90% ground shipping pattern until a certain time period when the spike in transportation costs actually occurred. This is where we saw a 60-40 split between air and ground shipping. When talking to the operations manager at that specific location, we started to notice that they fell behind on order fulfillment. This is because they could not meet the demands that the customers were placing on the specific distribution center. So while they had five days to pick and pack an order, they were actually picking and packing on the second last day and then shipping it two day air. This started to drive up costs tremendously for them. As an actionable decision, because of the data that they had, they added an additional support staff to that location when there was increased demand and could meet the objectives of their customers. The second way that we can really start to look at data and driving transportation costs down is through improved carry negotiations. This is because the data analytics platform really gives us the same insight as carriers. And this overall improves your ability to negotiate strategically with them. This is because key cost objectives such as cost per pound, cost per shipment, in specific ge geographic regions even, can be obtained. However, key performance objectives such as on time and late shipments can also be looked at through this platform. This helps you to increase your position at the bargaining table because it gives you an apples to apples comparison for your carriers. And this allows you to start scorecarding and really start to negotiate with them better. An example of this is where a carrier asks you to waive your guaranteed service refund while giving you a 2% discount in your rates. Here, you need to stop and ask yourself why. If you're shipping a million dollars worth of product, that's approximately $20,000 in savings from the carrier. However, if the carrier has an on-time performance of 94%, that means that 6% of your shipments are late and also potentially refundable, which is approximately 60,000. By waiving your GSR waiver in this case, you're not only making the carrier less accountable for the late shipments, but you've also just successfully negotiated yourself out of the $40,000. The third way that we can use data to start to drive our costs down is through optimizing freight movements and routing. This is because a platform that focuses on data starts to allow you to discover opportunities in your supply chain. Such, this could be examples such as zone skipping or DC analysis. This is because a platform starts to allow you to look at shipping patterns and customer buying behavior to meet the growing expectations of customers. Optimizing freight movements and routing can be achieved through the use of data. This is because a good platform will allow you to discover opportunities in your supply chain, such as zone skipping and DC analysis. This is because you can look at shipping patterns and customer buying behaviors and start to meet the expectations of your customers better. If you look at the chart on the screen, you'll see the percentage of customers that want same-day shipping and the customers that actually achieved same-day shipping from their e-commerce provider. In the case of grocery, for example, 64% of customers wanted next day shipping or same day shipping rather, but 19% actually got this. However, by taking your data and looking at it through a platform, you'll start to optimize freight movements and routing, which can help you to lessen the gap between customer expectations and your actual ability to deliver to them. This is where you can start to increase your two day footprint, your next day footprint, or even your same day footprint as your customer expectations change over time. A good data analytics platform really helps you to drive impactful visualizations. Placement of or relocation of a distribution center really should be, could be modeled in a platform. This is achieved again through analyzing shipping patterns, but also layering in costs such as DC operational costs or even labor rates in specific geographic areas. Of course, a good platform also should consider time and transit to the end customers because at the end of the day, they're the ones that really matter. A good example of where we saw data analytics really driving an impactful solution was when we had a customer on the West Coast. 
They had explosive growth, and with only one distribution center in the West, their customer base started to really grow in the East. If we specifically looked at cost per shipment, these were costing the company a lot of money. Poised with this information, we were tasked with finding the optimal warehouse location based not only where their customers were located, but how much it would cost to service them from different locations in the East Coast. One was in Illinois, one was in New Jersey, and one was in North Carolina. Ultimately, they put their second distribution center in the Midwest, as it could help to alleviate the cost to the East, meet the customer's expectations of quick shipping, but also would help them to facilitate their e-com movement into Canada. A fourth way data starts to help us drive costs down is by improving the end customer experience. Delivery overall really impacts customer engagement and retention. Bain and Co. recently cited that a 5% customer retention can increase profitability by 75%. So improving the customer experience is really important. One way that, that, that this can be achieved is by monitoring delivery exception data. By tracing errors back to their root cause and creating solution that address the issues head on, you can start to really see the results of this. Root causes can really be traced back to shippers, so poor packaging or unreadable labels, carriers such as mechanical delays or hub issues, or even the end customer by not being home or putting in the wrong apartment number when they type in their address on your website. Today, a few customers using delivery exception management are helping them to better manage the overall customer experience. They're allowing their teams to take actions based on specific exceptions and tie that information back to the root cause to create solutions. While some may argue that this doesn't look great from a bottom line perspective today, the goal is really to create long-term relationships with customers, which will help them drive long-term recurring revenues for many years. By developing the right carrier and service utilization, we can start to see decreases in transportation costs as well. This is because the normalization of data allows you to view spend and speed of carriers across a single platform. By doing so, you're really able to view carrier and service utilization across your network that not only meets your customer needs again, but allows you to reduce your spend. Data modeling allows you to view implications of changing a carrier or service in a specific region or across the country. A great way that we start to see this in real life is where we look at service utilization for air-to-ground downgrade opportunities. By understanding packages that were shipped by air but could still meet transit time expectations if shipped by ground, shippers can see a large cost savings. Reports, reports like this should be easily pulled from transportation, transportation data analytics software, so you're able to analyze these potential opportunities on a weekly or even monthly basis. So while we've talked about ways that data can really start to drive costs down through the use of a platform, what should you look for in a transportation analytics software? The first is one that should be transportation and technology focused. This really allows your teams to focus on one aspect, and that's your supply chain data, so that they can understand that data in depth. By using a standard analytics software, you'll have key integration with ERPs, carriers, TMS, and WMS systems. So really that leads us to our second point is a pre-existing integration with these same things. This will allow for a quicker transmission of data and gives you the insight into carrier visibility, which ties back into track and trace, delivery exception and event management, as well as EDI invoicing. If you're using the system to pay bills, you'll want the ability to integrate with financial systems to alleviate the burden from your financial teams as well. And finance teams love it when your shipments are geocoded for them systematically rather than manually. Another requirement that you should look for are standard and customizable reporting and dashboards. Although standard reporting is going to be great for getting your platform up off the ground quickly, it may not give you every solution that you need. And that's why you really need customizable reporting, which will give your team the ability to pull different reports and model different things the way that your business sees them rather than someone else. The last two things that are really essential to lo when looking for a transportation data analytics software are easy setup and an experienced team. Easy setup is achieved through not only the experienced team because they'll be able to help with a good implementation and quick setups, but also gets you insight into your data quicker. And not only will that experienced team help with an implementation, but the ongoing experience and insight into your metrics can be further heightened with this team. So we've looked at five different ways that data analytics can really start to reduce your transportation spend. 
a good platform should also be easy to look at so that your teams really want to start to drive into this information and give you solutions that will meet your customers' demands. At this point, I'll hand it back over to Bob, who will take us to some questions. Thank you, Adriano, and thank you to the attendees for, uh, for being with us today. Um, as Adriano mentioned, I'm uh, going to go through a couple of questions that we have. I don't get to all of our questions. Don't worry. We will forward them to Adriano later, and he'll be able to respond back to you to email. So, Adriano, the first question. I'm a small shipper. Will I still see the same value as a larger shipper would? Well, I mean, small and large businesses could both benefit from a transportation <laughs> analytics software. At a smaller company, any spikes in charges could really impact the day-to-day -day operating budgets. So really smaller companies should be concerned with day-to-day -day data in their supply chain as well. With a larger company, I often see them using it as a strategic tool rather than a day-to-day -day tool. And, and things like customer retention or monitoring costs at different locations come to mind. But this information will also be useful to a smaller company who's looking to expand and really manage that customer experience and transportation costs at the same time. Again, keep in mind these solutions should be scalable. So if you are small and you want to grow and continue to grow, the solution should be able to grow with you. Great, thanks. That, that scalability is a, good, uh, a great point. Um, second question, do I need a transportation analytics software to do this work? In other words, couldn't uh, you just use visualization software like Tableau or another analytics program? Yeah, that's a fair point. Um, I've used Tableau extensively in the past, and, and I love it. Um, however, there's a key difference with transportation-focused analytics software, and that's really the integration into your carrier networks, your ERP, your TMS, or your WMS. Uh, for a company that's looking to complete setups like this, you're going to spend a lot of time hiring developers, and the ongoing maintenance of, of the ongoing maintenance and, and hiring of staff to maintain this would really be expensive and, and and tie up a lot of your resources. With a transportation analytics software, uh, companies have already established these connections and have dedicated staff to maintain the connections and data quality. And, and data quality is really important because at the end of the day, it's garbage in, garbage out, as you'll see in most systems. Okay. Well, thank you. Um, that's all the questions we have and all the time we have for today's webcast. Uh, first, I want to thank uh, Adriana Viterbo uh, from Logistics Technologies for today's presentation. I want to thank all of the attendees. Uh, again, if we didn't get to your question, we will forward them to Adriana later for logistics management. I'm Bob Troublecock.